We are only three weeks into the NBA offseason and already the league looks like a completely different place than it did just last season. So far this offseason, 85 players have either signed to a new team or were traded to a new team. 85. That's 19% of the entire league wearing a different jersey next season. And with all these big moves going down, there will be a lot of changes in this upcoming season. The Bulls signed DeMar DeRozan and the GOAT himself, Alex Caruso, who will team up with his fellow former Laker, Lonzo Ball, which now officially makes Michael Jordan the second greatest Bulls player ever. After their most successful season in a decade, the Knicks had a great offseason so far, re-signing Julius Randle and Derrick Rose, trading for Kemba Walker, and signing Evan Fournier. The Knicks now look like one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Going forward, the playoffs should no longer be just a goal for the Knicks, but rather an expectation. On the other hand, it seems like the Blazers have gone in the opposite direction lately. For the last two seasons, Damian Lillard has been Bruh. begging that Trailblazer ownership give him better tools to work with, so he doesn't have to score 40 a game just to give his team a chance in the playoffs. And their response was to sign Cody Zeller, Ben McLemore, Tony Snell, while simultaneously losing Enos Cantor, Zach Collins, and Carmelo Anthony. I mean, there's bad off seasons, and then there's this. At this point, it's almost like the Blazers want Dame to leave. Because in today's league, any player can leave at any time. In the last two weeks alone, the combined contracts of every player that has been signed or traded to a new team are worth... Y'all ready for this number? Yeah, that's... All right, that's good. Okay, okay. All right, okay, all right. Okay, that's good. It's enough slices! One billion. $697 million, which at face value just sounds like an astronomical number. But for reference, in the entire history of the WNBA, which has been around for 25 seasons, there have been a total of $271 million worth of player contracts. Which means in just the last three weeks, NBA players who were signed or traded to new teams have agreed to over six times more money in contracts than every single WNBA player in the history of the WNBA. All of these contracts were signed in just 20 days. All of these contracts were signed over the course of 25 years. But this number doesn't even include the contracts of players that re-signed with their current teams over the last three weeks. If we include those contracts, this insane number inflates all the way to $3,683,000,000, including Steph Curry's four-year extension for $215 million. Which means in just a six-year stretch, Stephen Curry will have made more money than every single WNBA player ever combined. But Stephen Curry is the kind of player that you pay whatever you need to keep him around. He demands that type of money, unlike many other players. Because for every good contract in the NBA, there's about a dozen bad ones. The Miami Heat just re-signed Duncan Robinson for $90 million, the largest contract of any undrafted free agent in NBA history. And I'm happy for the guy. But that also means that next season, Robinson will be making more money than players like Jordan Clarkson, Christian Wood, and Jonas Valanciunas. On that same note, Duncan Robinson's teammate Jimmy Butler just signed a max extension worth $184 million. Now, don't get me wrong, Butler is a great player, but this contract is extremely hefty for a guy who just averaged 14 points per game in the playoffs while getting swept out of the first round. This contract means that when Jimmy Butler is 36 years old, he'll be making nearly $52 million in the final season of this four-year deal. This also means that by next season, Jimmy Butler will be making more money than Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Anthony Davis, and will be making just about as much as Giannis. Like I said, Butler is a great player who offers a lot more than just numbers on a box score, but to pay him like he's a generational talent doesn't seem like the best investment for a franchise looking to build on their young talent. But the big story that has unfolded over the last two weeks is the Los Angeles Avengers. I mean, Lakers. There is a lot to unpack here. So where do we begin? Well, for starters, the Lakers are a completely different team than they were even two weeks ago. Of the 15 players currently on their roster, eight of them were not on the team last season. These new players include Russell Westbrook, Trevor Ariza, Malik Monk, Kendrick Nunn, Dwight Howard, Wayne Ellington, Kent Bazemore, and Carmelo Anthony. 
In fact, this new Lakers squad is so new that the longest tenured player on the entire team is LeBron James, who's been on the Lakers for three seasons. And equally as shocking as the complete overhaul of their roster is the age of this roster. Now, the average age of an NBA player last season was 26 years old. The Oklahoma City Thunder have the youngest roster in the NBA with an average age of just 22.8 years old, which just makes me feel old and stupid and ancient. But the Lakers, on the other hand, have a roster made up of players with an average age of 31 and a half years old. 31 and a half. Last season on the Wizards, Russell Westbrook had played more NBA seasons than anyone else on the entire roster. This upcoming season, there will be seven players on the Lakers who have been in the NBA longer than Russ. Dog, this team is just old. And this got me thinking, is this Lakers squad the most accomplished group of NBA teammates ever? I mean, with all that age comes experience and accomplishments. So here's a breakdown of some of the major accolades and awards that the 2021-2022 Lakers roster has amassed, including some absolutely ridiculous totals like 55 all-star appearances and 17 all-defensive team selections. If we compare these numbers to, let's say, the 2017-2018 Warriors, it's not even close. And that's because this isn't a fair comparison. At the time, the stars of the 2017-18 Warriors were all in their prime with a lot of years left to play and a lot of awards left to win. But the exact opposite can be said about this Lakers team. Most of the big names are past their primes. Their best days on the court, long behind them. So instead of comparing them to the Warriors, let's try to find a more suitable comparison. What about last year's Nets team? Still, not even close. Okay, let's try the 2017-2018 Cavaliers, an experiment similar to this Lakers team that LeBron tried to pull off, recruiting old friends and big names of the past to try to win a ring. Still, nowhere close to the 2022 Lakers. All right, I've got a team that I think is pretty comparable. The 2003-2004 Lakers, when the organization brought in Carl Malone on his last leg and a serviceable Gary Payton to try to make up for the deteriorating relationship between Kobe and Shaq. Well, we're getting closer, but still not there. Okay, let's try one last roster. One of the biggest failed experiments in recent NBA history that also took place within the Lakers organization. The 2012-2013 Lakers, when Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol joined forces with veteran Steve Nash and a prime Dwight Howard. If y'all can recall, when this team was assembled, it broke headlines. On paper, one of the most stacked teams of the last few decades and a roster that most closely resembles the star power and accomplishments of this 2022 Lakers team. This team had the second best preseason odds to win a championship that season. Fast forward eight months, a bunch of injuries, and one clean sweep by the Spurs in the first round of the playoffs, and this roster was never to be seen or heard from again. And we all quickly learned that how a roster looks on paper compared to reality can often be two very different things. I think we can all agree that this Lakers team is more talented than the 2012 team. Anthony Davis is in his prime. LeBron is still looking like a top five player in the league. Westbrook just led the NBA in assists on his way to averaging a triple double for the fourth time in his career. Carmelo Anthony has found new life as a great spark off the bench, still one of the best shot makers in the game. And Dwight Howard is, uh, well, he's Dwight Howard. Aside from age, the biggest knock on this team being their lack of shooters. But if you take a closer look at this roster, they have more shooting power than you may believe, with four players shooting better than 40% from downtown. But uh, these guys, we won't talk about them. But it seems like the biggest question about this newly assembled roster is whether they are a super team or not. And in my opinion, the obvious answer is yes, of course they are. Simply because they have two all NBA caliber players and another all star caliber player as well. I'm really not sure how you would make the argument that this isn't a super team. And it honestly has nothing to do with Melo signing or the addition of Dwight, but rather because we already know that AD and LeBron can win a title with an average supporting cast. So a championship level team adds an all star and more depth. Well, you do the math. 
And just like every other super team ever assembled, there's really only two outcomes to this experiment. A, they at least make it to the finals and meet expectations, or B, they completely fall apart before the playoffs even begin. This has been the fate of every single super team in existence, at least in regards to their first season together. There's really been no in between. Just take a look at the successful and attempted super teams in recent history. The 2018 Thunder was a bust. The 2018 Cavaliers, bust. The 2017 Warriors, championship. The 2015 Cavaliers, finals and then championship the next season. The 2012 Lakers was a bust. The 2010 Heat, a trip to the finals and then a championship the next season. The 2007 Celtics, championship. And the 2003 Lakers, bust. This is just the fate of super teams, and with the 2021-22 Lakers joining this list, it's only a matter of time before they meet their fate as champions or just another addition to the expanding list of super teams that were a bust. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.